In this video, let me discuss with all of you histogram, the uses with concepts and illustrate the same with an example in the Jupyter Notebook of Python. Histogram is a snapshot of the frequency distribution. Therefore, we call it sometimes frequency histogram. So, it's a pictorial representation or graphical representation in which the x-axis represents the classes and the y-axis represents the frequencies in the form of bars. The height of the bars are proportional to the frequencies and histogram depicts the pattern of the distribution for the characteristic being measured. Whether the pattern looks like a bell curve, ideal bell curve as displayed in the bottom or it is skewed to the right or it is skewed to the left or the distribution is a mixture of two distributions, two picket points are there and so on and so forth. Therefore, it is a fundamental tool. People use it in quality control applications. The starting point is what is the pattern? Even in the data analytics world today, we are talking about pattern. And a quick way to understand the pattern is histogram, construction of the histogram and studying the behavior. So let's look at the TARC example which we have done for the measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion. And I'm going to enter the data and see here what we can get. So, import pandas as PD as before. Then the data is entered, TARC. The 25 observations starting with 8 till we reach uh, the final point here, the last point. And therefore, we are able to say all the observations are entered starting with uh, and uh, all the things are entered. Okay, the data entry is over. Uh, we can scroll and see all the points and then just to make sure that you have entered all. Okay, that's fine. Then I give the name to the column first by invoking the pandas and declaring this variable as a column vector pd.dataframe tark and I give the name tark within quotation. Now, construction some guidelines. Draw the histogram and interpret. That's what we are saying. Question one, we have already addressed descriptive analytics and uh, uh, in which we talked about measures of central tendency and the summary measures of variation already. So what are the rules for the histogram? How do you decide the number of classes? So we say first you compute the range. The difference between the maximum value of the data set and the minimum value of the data set, it's equal to 12 in this case. Number of classes is generally taken as the square root of the sample size. 25 observations are there. Therefore, we take it as 5 as a starting point. Width of the class or class interval, divide the range by the number of classes. It is 2.4. So you round it to two and have six classes. We started rough rule is five, but we have six classes. Now, in order to do graphics in Python, it's important for us to import the Seaborn, a graphic interface library available, 
alongside matplotlib and therefore we declare import c bond in short form as sn import matplot library lib dot by plot python plot import matplotlib dot pi plot sorry as plt so plt is a short form of the plot c bond the short form is sn then we say plt plot dot hist histogram the variable is my data dot tar or the column vector for which you draw then you give title plot dot title histogram displaying tar behavior plot x label x axis class plot y label tar pressure plot the x axis with limits ranging from 8 to 20 because 8 is the minimum 20 is the maximum now histogram will come but we need to interpret therefore i say values bins the number of classes and bars is equal to plot histogram which you've already done for the my data color is red bins are six because we have decided six classes edge color is white because each bar is separated from the other with a white color and then we say plot bar labels bars within brackets font size is 10 color is equal to navy i give this now plot show so this part here is for our readability so that the histogram can be interpreted now let me just say invoke run just run here. I get a histogram, beautiful histogram, displaying the dark behavior. You can see 8 to 10, 10 to 12, 12 to 14, 14 to 16, 16 to 18, and 18 to 20. X axis is class, Y axis is dark pressure. This is the pattern. It's not a perfect bell curve. It has to be adjusted. Some corrections are required to center the process, but it looks reasonable. And the torque pressure behavior appears to be approximately a bell curve, but not a neat bell curve. Some adjustments are still required. So this is the interpretation. So it's a very important and very easy tool and extremely handy in studying the pattern of the distribution in a pictorial form. Thank you very much. We will see you in the next video shortly. Thank you.